Okay, here is uh, a, a video that's going to talk about Putty. Uh, Putty is an application that supports not only Telnet, uh, but more importantly, it supports SSH, uh, Secure Shell. And uh, it, there's another video on Cross University Online uh, that kind of talks about the differences between Telnet and SSH and, and the security implications. And really, the whole point of that video is to kind of scare you into, please, when possible, don't use Telnet. Um, SSH is a much more secure protocol uh, when when talking between clients and servers. Uh, and so th we talked about in a via site administration how ASA is capable of, of supporting both Telnet and SSH, uh, at least current versions of it, and current is, we go back quite a ways of being able to support that, but um, uh, you know, I, I can do both Telnet and SSH. It's just a matter of checking that box. Well, that all sounds great, but what happens if you're somewhere where you don't have your computer with ASA installed on it? Um, you know, ASA requires an installation. It's got a lot of stuff. It's it's thick, you know, in, in terms of, of what it takes up. Um, Whereas uh, Putty is tiny, it's a, it's a little program, it's open source, which means it's free. Um, I carry a USB thumb drive with me everywhere I go, and um, I have a directory on there of called Network Tools, uh, and uh, Putty is actually in that, uh, that tool that I use quite a bit. So um, maybe the first topic is how do I get to uh, to download Putty. Well, I'll head on over to uh, www.google.com. I always go to Google for everything. Um, and I just type in Putty, P U T T Y is how we spell that. And uh, the very first item in here takes us to the website. Uh, and uh, I can click on download, and this will list all of the different distributions uh, of it. Um, you know, so it's uh, primarily for Windows. Um, a couple of different versions of it, but I always just grab putty.exe, and um, we'll click on that. I'll save it, uh, and I will just save it to my desktop. We'll go up. We'll click on desktop. And here's Putty. I'll just double click it and run it. Um, so it just comes up, and, and this one happens, even though I've just downloaded it, has found some configuration files that were already on my computer previously that has some of the information in here. But the idea of this, um, Putty is really very simple to use. Um, you've, we've got the session that just is this page that we're looking at right here. I've got terminal, which I can pick um, how I want this to interact. Uh, you know, specifically with the keyboard, if I want to do VT100, if I want to use, you know, the Linux or escape sequences. Um, you know, most of, I'll be honest, I don't modify too much of this stuff. I do, uh, you know, I can change the color, I can change um, all of, you know, quite a bit to it, but um, most of what I do is all sitting up here at, um, at the session. And so, um, you know, I, I can do raw, telnet, our login, SSH, and serial. The two that I use all the time is serial and SSH. No, uh, telnet and SSH. Serial becomes interesting if you're doing like console ports into routers um, where you need a serial cable, you know, an RS-232 connected to the COM port. Um, that works really well for doing things like that. Uh, but we'll use SSH. And all I have to do is type in an IP address. So 10.100.1.10, for example, is one of the IP addresses of a media server, an S8500 that I have in our training lab in Minneapolis. And, um, you know, by using port 22, um, that'll just kind of get me there. One of the options while we're here that I want to show you is if I want to save that session, if I want to... Um, you know, maybe I've, I'm in that switch a lot and I can say um, putty demo and um, once I've named it and I've got the IP address and I can hit save and now that'll list in there. So the next time that I come into this, um, all I have to do is click on one of my saved sessions, hit load 
and it will go back and change the icons for that. So if I want to get back to where I'm going, I'll go into Putty Demo, I'll hit Load, and sure enough, there's my IP address again. Not that it's tough to just type in the IP address, but if you tend to forget your IP addresses, this is a good way to put a name to it. So um, I'll just go in and show you, and um, so the magic here is I'm using SSH. Um, it looks a whole lot like Telnet, you know, from a DOS prompt. Um, I'm going to log in as my password. Um, I'm going to use VT100 as my terminal type. And uh, I'm in the Linux shell of a, uh, a, of, of I Communication Manager in S8500. And I can issue the typical kinds of commands. StatApp is one that uh, I'll use occasionally uh, to kind of show what's going on within my I Communication Manager and make sure all the services are running correctly. Um, and so um, all that's great. I can exit out and it brings me right back out. Now the follow-up question is, well that sounds good and if I were to use PuTTY and let's say I want to go into System Administration Terminal 10.100.1.10 and I want to go into port 5022 which is the SSH port for SAT, System Administration Terminal. Um, so same IP address, but now when I log in, it's going to be a very different place. Um, with that particular pa username password, I have to put in a PIN. You wouldn't normally have to do that. Um, but the problem here is that VT100, which is what PuTTY defaults to isn't going to work. Um, I certainly can't do 513 uh, or 4410, which is what we in the Avaya world would probably know the most, 513. And so I have to change it to this Y2KTT, Y2KTT. Uh, that's Windows 2000 terminal type. And um, then it brings me in and everything looks great at that point. Um, the magic of using that Y2KTT means I have to do these escape sequences instead of my function keys. We all know that F7 is, is next page, F8 is previous page, F3 is sub submit, F1 is cancel. Well, function keys don't work in this terminal emulation mode. Um, so I have to use these escape sequences. So if I want to go to the next page, I type in escape and then N. Not together, I just hit escape, N, and that'll bring me to the next page. If I want the previous page, escape, P, escape, P. Uh, it doesn't want to let me do that. So already you're seeing a problem with um, using that Y2KTT. Therefore, I use a different program. Uh, but it's important to know putty, or putty because everybody in the data world knows putty. Um, if you want to sound cool, just say, oh yeah, I mean, I'm going to putty into the box. Um, we almost use putty as a verb uh, once, once we start getting into that world. Uh, but here what I'll do is instead of going to um, look putty, I instead am going to look for tutty. And to try to help out, I'm going to, because tutty may not show up, it'll say, hey, are you sure you meant uh, did you mean putty instead of tutty? It, Google will help me spell check it. But I, I'm ultimately looking for 513 terminal emulation. So it brings me to this very first item. And um, on here, it's it's just a, a guy um, who took putty and said, putty rocks, this is the coolest thing in the world. Boy, I wish it had 513 terminal emulation. Um, and so if you go into downloads, I can download tutty and uh, I'll save it to the desktop. I do it the exact same way. I don't have to save it again because I, I use this thing a lot. But um, all I'd have to do is click on that uh, tutty. It'll uh, copy that exe to my desktop. I've uh, just simply installed it, uh, put it down here as a shortcut. It looks exactly like putty. Okay, everything about it, and how we put the IP addresses in, whether I can do SSH or Telnet, serial, uh, I can save my session, I can load my session, when do I want to, all of that's identical. The only thing that this modified was the ability of the terminal type to include AT&T 513. Okay, everything else is identical. Uh, I click on that, it says, oh, you, it seems you want to configure 513 terminal emulation, which is primarily used to manage Lucent Avaya phone switches. Do you want the terminal settings to be adjusted so they look more like Avaya terminal emulators? Sure, yeah, that's fantastic. Well, now, when I go back to session, 
Again, everything looks the same, but when I go 10.100.1.10 and I have to change the port to go SAT, System Administration Terminal, so I'm going to go to 5022. And, you know, I could save that as a session. I'll say putty demo 2 and hit save. So, um, and I don't have to do that, but sometimes it's nice because then I don't have to go touch the keyboard. But um, open. Now, ooh, right off the bat, it's blue and yellow. Boy, we Avaya Lucent and AT&T people are all of a sudden very comfortable with that color scheme. Um, I'll put in my password. Now, because I'm doing 513, I can actually leave the default. So this over here says, hey, if you just hit enter, I'm going to do that 513. Great. It's all in there now. Now, what this does not do is show you the function keys. The function keys work, but boy, if you've been doing Avaya, it loose an AT&T for any amount of time, you know that cancel is F1. You know submit is F3. You know help is F5. Um, you know next page is F7 and previous page is F8. So now when I do this, list config all, um, I can just hit F7 and it'll scroll through and do all those things that I, I need it to do. Um, if I'm going to change, let's say I'll add station 1000. Well, let's spell it right, station 1000. Um, if I want to, you know, I'll just make up some stuff here. Um, and let's say I want to submit it now, I'll just hit F3 and it submitted successfully. So, Tuddy in all truth, I have both Putty and Tutty on my USB thumb drive. I'll be honest, I only use Tutty uh, because it has all the coolness of Putty, but uh, gives us uh, voice people uh, the 513 terminal emulation. So, um, very great tool, very powerful, allows you to easily access a system uh, that requires SSH uh, and very thin very small and very free. Um, I really, uh, this is really good stuff and um, I commend the author for this because uh, it has uh, saved a lot of people a lot of time. So good stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have uh, any uh, other interest, please check out Cross University Online and uh, look at some of our other subscription videos. Um, otherwise, uh, check www.crosstelecom.com and go to Cross University and uh, check out a listing of all of our classroom-based courses where it takes this whole approach uh, but gives you a much more hands-on experience. Uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.